unlike Overwatch 1. Content creators have already been making videos showing off just how bad this stuff gets. So right here we can see the Witch Kiriko skin is 2,600 coins. The uh, Junker Queen Executioner skin is 1,900 coins. And then making matters even worse is the fact that the Witch Kiriko skin cannot be purchased separately. This 2,600 coins price is not for the skin, it's for the bundle that Ooh. includes a bunch of items and that's why it costs more than the Executioner skin here, which is just 1,900 coins. You can see right here in this video by Stelosa that if you try to purchase the Wish skin by itself, the unlock button is grayed out. They just straight up don't allow you to buy the skin by itself for 1,900 coins. They force you to get the 2,600 coins bundle, which Blizzard insists is a discounted price. Oscu Oscu with the two. Yon yeah, complaining. Meanwhile, the sky is still blue. That's right, man. The world keeps on a turn, and while these motherfuckers are still ass blasted about microtransactions, like this is the thing, man, and this is the reason why people will spend money on these skins, is because either they just want to collect them all, because you know there is like a kind of collectible mentality. That's how I was with Divas cosmetics, as I tried to get like every voice line, every spray, every icon, every victory pose, every highlight intro, every skin, you know. Like, because that was the one character I played, so over time I tried to unlock everything that was available for her as, like, kind of like an objective, I guess. But there's another factor to this shit, and people will see this skin and be like, oh my god, bro, <laughs> she looks so fucking hot. I want her to bounce on my broomstick. And people are, like, fucking, like, sexually attracted to these skins. And that's why they can charge so much money for it, because motherfuckers are thinking with their fucking dicks. Price, 2,600 coins. Like, why would a motherfucker drop $50 on a fucking OnlyFans when they could literally just boot up Pornhub for free? Because motherfuckers aren't thinking with their head, they're thinking with their fucking cock, basically. I'm telling you, like, in the rise of these fucking weebs and all this shit, who beat off to fucking drawings and anime girls Apparently and all this type of shit... Like, they fucking know what they're doing. Like, they know their fucking audience, bro. There's a reason why Overwatch porn is more popular than the fucking game. They know people want to see these characters in different fucking costumes and shit. It's 29% off. Many consider it to be deceptive and kind of misleading that they're adding that parentheses. This is actually a discounted price when the price was never really discounted to begin with because it launched at that 2600 coins price point. Your mom's lover with the five biggest prop with Overwatch 2 skins are they are mad expensive when they are so mid. Plus, the Kiriko bundle is illegal. What do you mean it's illegal? The fuck? What's illegal about it? And people are even calling out the legalities behind this. As pointed out by this Reddit user, event items reduced prices are illegal in Germany. In Germany, it is considered misleading and deceptive to sell an item at a reduced price without it being sold to its original price. Now, see, I can tell you where the argument for this one's made. The price of each one of those items in the bundle individually would be the undiscounted price. So, not today, Germany. So the thing is, is once all the items are available individually, it'll be like 3,000 coins total versus 2,600 is my guess, or like 4,000, whatever the fucking uh, percentage was. So yeah, each item individually probably adds up to 40, or like 4,000, and if you just buy the bundle, it's 2,600 would be my guess. So not today, Germany since it gives the impression of a false sense of urgency. Now, if you go into the bundle itself, where you can check out the individual items that are included, and by the way, it doesn't help that the accompanying items that come with the witch skin that you have to purchase through this bundle are not compelling at all. A charm, an intro, an icon, and a name card. A I guarantee you we will see that skin in certain videos on the internet. Closure that blizzard. Lux the Fox of the Five, imagine if him and the rest of Reddit found out about pre-order skins in single-player games. Don't tell them about God of War. The market collapse, global gaming heresy. I know, man. It's just amazing. They can turn a blind eye. They can turn a blind eye to the games they like, but, you know, it's just wild, man. I don't, I don't understand being genuinely pissed off about fucking skins in a free-to-play game. Like, 
Dog, you don't need the fucking, you don't need the fucking skins. What are put here is that bundled price comparison is based on acquiring each item separately. So what they're saying is 37. Yeah, no shit. I was right. 100 coins is what all this would cost if you bought them individually. And so they're saying that by offering this for 2,600 coins, it's a discounted price. But not only are bundled. Yeah, because you can buy the bundle before each item is available individually. Bundles usually sold at a lower price than buying items separately, and that wouldn't be considered the discounted price. By labeling this as discounted, you're giving the impression a bundle price is a discounted price. What the fuck kind of logic is that? That this is temporary, and so people should purchase this now before it is temporary because once the items are individually available, the bundle's no longer going to be available. So you'll have to spend 3700 if you want all five of these items. The discount goes away creating a potential false sense of urgency. Here's another post that pointed out something similar, and this one has garnered almost 20,000 upvotes. The current monetization is illegal in multiple countries, including Australia. It might be possible to report them to your local consumer protection authorities. We did it, Reddit. In some countries, products cannot be marked off from a price that it hasn't been sold at for enough time. Stilos also took to Twitter to complain that if you want the new Kyrko Witch skin, it's 2600 Overwatch coins, lol. You cannot buy the skin on its own, only the bundle, $25 for that, lol. What a laugh. People are also complaining about the fact that Kiriko's Witch skin feels more like a, I don't know, like a Mercy skin. It doesn't feel like it suits the character, like they really didn't put that much effort into making her Halloween costume thematically relevant to the character itself. Yeah, dude, they should have made her a slutty cat girl. Like, fuck, man. Give the people what they really want. And folks on Reddit have been celebrating the fact that content creators have been speaking out about how this whole Halloween event and its rewards and its skins have been handled. We did it, Reddit. Content creators are talking about it. Even some game journalists have spoken out with Timur Hussein tweeting me looking at Overwatch 2 Halloween skin price. And then here is the... Uh, yeah, have you seen how much games journalists make? There's a reason why they all have four fucking roommates. Idris Elba meme video of him choking on hot chicken wings and wondering WTF. And the general community sentiments have all echoed just how disappointing this has all been, especially for veteran players who are used to Halloween events being pretty on point usually. So right here on the official Blizzard <laughs> forum, somebody saying Overwatch 2 monetization is killing my excitement of the game, explaining everything that people have already explained. you got people saying, so uh, Halloween, expressing what a disappointment this all has been, from the quality of the skins to the way they're paywalled and how meager the rewards have sand the man man with the two just got home from work what's going on uh basically people are upset that uh kiriko's slutty witch costume is not slutty enough for the 25 dollars price tag been for the stuff that you do get when you play the game without having to pay more folks pointing out the fact that you can only buy the kiriko skin in a bundle and have to pay 2600 coins instead of being able to pay the reduced 1900 coins price which already is too expensive for a legendary skin plenty of folks highlighting how purchasable items have been priced in such a way that you'll how much are fortnite skins how much are fortnite legendary skins 2000 v bucks all right how much is 2000 v bucks how much is 2000 v bucks 20 bucks Okay, thank you. Same fucking price as Fortnite, guys. Where is the fucking outrage? You'll always be a little short and have to go with the next bundle that's more expensive, and this is how they manipulate you into spending more money than you otherwise would have. People are highlighting the fact that this $37 bundle without the discount is about as expensive as Overwatch 1 as a whole, which again was $40. Even on Reddit, you'll find people talking about how monetization is ruining the Halloween event. Plenty of people expressing that the Halloween event should be like it was in Overwatch 1. You should be able to unlock skins by playing the Halloween event. There should be a gameplay path towards being able to earn rewards to celebrate this season to celebrate this uh, holiday but instead the special skins are relegated specifically to those who are in financially comfortable enough positions to be able to shell out bro i don't think i ever got a legendary diva skin out of a loot box playing overwatch i always had to buy them with coins delta gold with the five to be fair fortnite skin can be used whenever wherever not just one character well i mean i guess i mean it's kind of similar though like you can't put a male skin on a female character but I, I kind of get what you're saying, but at the same time, I don't really think it's the same. I mean, 
yes and no. Like, there's female skins, there's male skins. Like, it's kind of the same thing. I don't know. I mean, I guess you could kind of make that point, but, you know, most people buy the skins for their main in Overwatch and then don't really give a fuck about the cosmetics for anything else. At exorbitant amounts for skins that shouldn't cost anywhere this much. As for the rest, I have to be more frugal with money. Well, here we have the Halloween event rewards. You can see right here that this post has garnered over 10,000 upvotes, almost 11,000 upvotes, because it showed off what the event rewards look like. And again, it's like useless, or at least some of the least. Like, I don't think you can put like the fucking Fortnite default skin in the fucking Harley Quinn booty shorts, right? I don't think so. <laughs> At least last time I checked. Desired cosmetics like voice lines and sprays and weapon charms and name cards that don't really give you a sense of having accomplished anything substantial by playing the game. People are also speculating that the Apology Reaper skin here, that was supposed to be the free Halloween skin that they instead decided to make an Apology skin. It was a skin that they Shiki with the 15, one thing I hate about free-to-play game, or wait, free-to-play in-game currencies are bundles. I wish they just gave us flat-out exchange rate and let us uh, type in the numbers. Well, eh, fair enough. I mean, the skin will be available after the fact, after this event, so chances are you'll be able to buy it outright, would be my guess. That we're going to give you for free anyway, just through a different context, through a more sort of, you know, let's celebrate this holiday context rather than, hey, I'm sorry we screwed up this launch. Here you go. Here's the skin. So this isn't actually additive content. It's just uh, content that's been reformatted and uh, it just feels kind of sneaky. Assuming that this is true, this is still speculation. I wouldn't know for sure. So disillusioned have people been about Overwatch 2's monetization that they're instead deciding to highlight how much more value you can get out of spending money that you would have spent on skins. Saying the man man with a two, I saw people say they want loot boxes back in Overwatch. Yong, yeah, included, man. He is now advocating for loot boxes. Like, that's what's wild, bro. Like, I literally spent a hundred plus dollars trying to get a fucking D.Va skin right before Overwatch 2 came out. And I opened up, like, what? Like, over a hundred fucking event loot boxes to try and get that D.Va skin? And I ended up barely getting enough coins from opening it to buy the skin outright. So I wasted like over a hundred dollars trying to get a skin that in Overwatch 2 I could just pay 25 bucks for to unlock immediately. Like how the fuck is that not better? <laughs> like, I don't know bro, like this to me, I would much rather just buy what I fucking want and not have to risk it opening fucking loot boxes personally. Like I only buy cosmetics that I actually like in the first place, I don't need to get every single fucking thing in the game. On video games, full-ass video games like Terraria and Outer Wilds and Cult of the Lamb and Witcher 3 and all these games, Vampire Survivors, Hollow Knight, Pal- Oh my god, bro, The Witcher 3? From a small indie studio in Poland known as CD Projekt Red? Then, you know, this is their breakout hit, guys. Nobody's ever heard of them before. It's really impressive what an indie studio like them accomplished. Dance, Hades, so on and so forth, that are cheaper than some of these skins or at worst around the same price some of these skins and you get entire games some of the most renowned and beloved and replayable games at that some folks are saying that this doesn't even feel like an event it just feels like a shop refresh and look all events are on some level a shop refresh but if you give people enough incentives and exactly bro it's like buying the pokemon cards you want instead of wasting hundreds of dollars opening packs and never fucking getting the card you wanted in the first place rewards and gameplay paths towards earning the most desired rewards then people will be fine with it but with this halloween event it just feels like they took the event out of it and only left behind the shop refresh aspect of it at least as far as the rewards are concerned there's just so much less to grind for you know what i mean so it makes the grind just feel monotonous whereas when you have something truly desirable at the end of the tunnel you know the grind feels like you're working towards something and it just incentivizes you to keep coming back while having fun with what is ultimately a fun game when it comes to moment to moment gameplay and the matches again it's like a really good competitive shooter marred by so many compromising elements around it some people are aptly pointing out the fact that overwatch 2 going free to play is very much akin to halo cp is better after the oh shit bro don't tell the feds. FBI, the FBI is in here, so be careful. Going free to play and how that ultimately, yes, it made it more accessible for new players, 
but what was lost in the process made both of them overall just a worse feeling game to grind through. This Reddit post right here bullet points how both games went from a box model to free to play. Both games introduced a battle pass system with a heavy emphasis on challenges that force you to play the game in ways you don't want to. Both games introduced an egregious store featuring items that were previously unlockable for a $20 price tag. Both games featured lackluster events which recycled content and didn't give you any meaningful rewards. Both games launched with PvP and PvE separately. Yeah. Why is he just reading? I guess... Dude, I guess Yong has evolved from like reading articles to now just straight up reading Reddit in the first place. That's actually it's actually uncanny how similar these two are. Both Wait, he just sticks on Reddit nowadays. Games were missing key features from previous titles. Both games launched with broken rank systems. Both games had a plethora of bugs, which the developer seemed to pay no mind to. Both games lack critical social features. Both games launched with an embarrassing amount of so-called new content. This is why the trend towards free-to-play has me deeply He's concerned <laughs> with these live services. Like, Yong's just going to start quoting Reddit from now on. That's it, man. He's not even going to leave Reddit and multiplayer titles because of what's lost along the way when a game goes free to play and how much harder they have to monetize and how much more they have to close off gameplay paths because they have to make that money back. People are also anticipating that if Blizzard does price cuts, you know, to respond to the backlash, then it's still going to be not in good intention. This uh, Reddit user basically... Oh my god, even if they cut the price, we still won't be happy. Which means your entire fucking argument's completely falling on deaf ears. Because if you motherfuckers wouldn't be happy if they dropped the price by 50%, then you weren't going to fucking spend money anyway. That's how any company would look at that shit warns about the whole two steps forward one step backward maneuver where they put out there the worst possible version of a monetization system so they can then take a step back and say all right we heard you we're gonna dial yeah no shit you can that's the thing that's like the art of negotiation 101 you can always go lower you can never go higher no shit when you're selling something you always start out as high as possible and work your way down when you're negotiating, if you have the price listed at like a hundred bucks, no one's gonna fucking take you seriously when you say, No, actually I want one fifty for it. You can only go down in the art of negotiation. So always start out high. Duh. That's like basic business one on one. I let back, but they still did take one step forward. This is how monetization You gotta test the fucking waters to see what people are willing to pay for something, because people are much more likely to accept a price drop than a fucking price increase. Look at the PS5, people got pissed all over that shit systems have inchwormed their way towards getting worse and worse and normalizing worse and worse systems. And then last but not least, I want to highlight this Reddit post that points out why Blizzard removed these skins from the Battle Pass. So for those who don't know, this screenshot right here is actually a leak of skins that are seemingly upcoming. And these are, you can see right here, pretty cyberpunk themed. And the theory right now is that these were supposed to be a part of the current Battle Pass, which if you look through the rewards are also cyberpunk themed but don't include these skins and so the theory out there is that initially the plan was to have all these skins as part of the battle pass but blizzard shifted plans to essentially sell these skins individually at a high price and while this is speculation it's not the most unlikely prospect and given people's distrust towards blizzard and their monetization systems you know i don't blame people for making these kinds of assumptions and always assuming the worst about how Blizzard tackles monetization because they've, you know, as of late, been approaching monetization and sort of in the most bad faith way possible, it feels like. So yeah, this is what the discourse is looking like right now surrounding Overwatch 2's monetization. People just feel so disillusioned by what a step backwards this is, what a leap backwards this all is. And it's just felt like with every new game that Blizzard releases as of late, monetization becomes progressively worse and worse and more egregious by leaps and bounds. I mean, Diablo Immortal is even by free-to-play standards and by mobile game standards. Oh my god, is he still bitching? No shit, Yong. A fucking crappy Chinese company made it. What the fuck do you expect? Those motherfuckers dump money into mobile games. Of course a Chinese company is gonna fucking be exploitative. Duh. There are some of the most egregious monetization I've ever seen. Hundreds of thousands of dollars to max out a character. It's ridiculous. Welcome to the... F <laughs> Welcome to the future of gaming if Tencent gets everything. Or what was the company that made Diablo Immortal? NetEase, right? I don't know. But yeah, welcome to the wonderful world of fucking Chinese free-to-play. And motherfuckers are bitching about fucking Overwatch. 
And now with Overwatch... And Diablo Immortal, literally, it affects the gameplay. Overwatch's cosmetics are... Or Overwatch's microtransactions are purely cosmetic. So it's not even in the same fucking ballpark. Watch 2, you know, maybe doesn't reach Diablo Immortal heights, but uh, Diablo Immortal doesn't necessarily set a high bar for a proper, fair monetization system. So that's not much of a compliment for Overwatch 2. It just sucks that um, the rewards have to feel so stingy in a game that has such a solid gameplay foundation that if you get the rewards balance right, you could have a happy, thriving community. But, yeah, this cynical... That's right, man. Yong, yeah. His Cyberpunk 2077 video, he was manipulated. And, you know, his opinion of the game was not his own, even though he claims to have played it. ...approach is just uh, really bumming the community out, and it's understandable. So... This is the situation right now. This is what's going on with the Halloween event and the backlash you might have seen surrounding it. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are and what your experiences have. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. All right. So let's see if our boy is uploaded. I don't think so, but we'll check. I don't think he's uploaded anything. Oh, wait. What the fuck? Do I ever... I look. Oh, <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? A ton of God of War Ragnarok game. All right, here we go, man. Let's hear from a true God of War fan. Okay, well, this is going to be a very fun video to make because... What is this game in the background? It looks... Is this uh, World of Warcraft? It looks familiar. Apparently, people are leaking all... I don't know why it looks familiar because I've never actually played World of Warcraft, but it looks familiar for some reason. ...of God of War Ragnarok. The boss fights, the storylines, every bit of it. Now, we're not going to be discussing the spoilers directly, but I do want to discuss this situation because it's certainly messy. What's up, gamers? Dreamcast Guy here. Hi, hope you're having a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already, I think we can easily agree that God of War Ragnarok has got to be one of the most hyped games in all of 2022. It's one of the only games coming out in 2022. Bro, this year has been so fucking shitty. I'll fight anybody that says otherwise. Beyond the other AAA releases, beyond even the other- Call of Duty fucking carried. Their PlayStation 5 exclusives. I mean, God of War Ragnarok has an incredible amount of hype around it. In fact, there have been multiple surveys now that have shown that this is the biggest must-have PS5 game. People are actually... It's like the only fucking PS5 game that's come out in the past, like, what, 10 months? No shit. ...buying a PlayStation... What the fuck even comes out after it, either? Nothing. Like, Spider-Man comes out in two years? Damn, man, great time to be a PS5... Gamer. No shit, it's the most, like, anticipated game. ...five just for Ragnarok, because while it may also be on PlayStation 4, a lot of people consider this to be that next-gen gaming experience that... It's not. ...a lot of us have been craving. Well, somehow, over the course of the last 24 hours... Dog, Elden Ring came out in fucking February. It has literally been... Nine months almost since that fucking game came out. Elden Ring is not carrying 2022, bro. That game came out at the very beginning. And let's face it, like most people played that game and finished it in a couple weeks. Of course, people have been getting ultra early copies of the game, physical discs, and just popping it into their console and playing the heck out of the game. Now, first and foremost, Obviously, <gasps> digital content, cosmetic items locked behind a fucking arbitrary launch edition. Bruh. All right, Reddit, get them. I'm incredibly jealous. I do not have a review code yet. Uh, Sony, if you want to send me one, I'll be sure to make. Oh, shit. I did forget about Horizon Forgotten West. And I think everybody else did, too. A cool video. I am going to review the game, and I'm very excited about it. But this morning, I woke up to see this tweet by Okami Games saying, Major, God of War Ragnarok leaks have happened. Why did he just say major? Major. What the fuck? See this tweet by Okami Games saying, Major, God. Is it because his like his little profile picture is black, man? Was Dreamcast guy about to try and use his uh, ghetto voice? 
But this morning I woke up to see this tweet by Okami Games saying, Major God of War Ragnarok. Is he just assuming he has like a fucking black southern accent or something? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> leaks have happened overnight the gaming leaks subreddit is literally nothing but ragnarok spoilers time to mute those keywords now i must admit this screenshot is funny uh obviously everything's cleaned up here you don't see any of these spoilers but i had to go there myself i'm surprised it didn't start out by saying oh lordy or whatever the fuck bro that's like the fucking vibe i was getting from that shit like holy <laughs> damn man dreamcast guy almost was about to break the mask uh-oh uh, thankfully, they have this thing called the spoiler tag right here. This is blurred out uh, automatically, but there is a huge gameplay spoiler right here. There's a oh huge boss fight spoiler right here. It is bonkers to me that they've managed bonkers to let so much creep out. I, I mean, in the modern age of social media, I, I do kind of feel like that's part of what this is, is that you know, everybody that loves be the discussion of video games as much as playing them now. I've said this in previous videos, but I do feel like the experience of video games have certainly changed. Now they do a teaser, they do a big reveal, they show off a bunch of gameplay. The conversation, the Dreamcast guys becoming Camelot. Oh my God, dude, that fucking guy's voice is obnoxious. I've been to Alabama many a times in my life. Not a single motherfucker has ever talked like that shit. Blue Eyes White Dragon with the two. Are you a munch? What the fuck? I don't even know what the fuck that means, bro. I'm an old man. I'm not hip with the kids lingo these days, man. The hype, even discussions look of pre-order countdowns you know. is part of the gaming experience at this point. So if somebody manages to find an early copy of the game... People used to do this back in the day. Like, obviously, I'm an old man. Like, way, way, way back in... Someone whose only use is eating pussy without getting anything in return? Yeah, I'd do it, bro. I'd take one for the team. Sure, why not? In the day, people were leaking freaking Gears of War months early. Or, you know, all sorts of random Uncharted clips and stuff like that. That stuff would creep onto the internet. But back in... I am friends yo we should watch that video where he cried about nobody showing up to his fucking birthday party the day before there were like major twitter accounts and super famous yeah he made the video about not having friends and then said that everybody who like subs to his channel is his friend so that way people will go like i'm your friend here's a five dollar donation but yeah as youtubers that stuff was kind of just you know, tiny secrets. It was forum posts and stuff like that. Whereas now people really enjoy not just the clout, but the ability to share stuff before you're supposed to have it. I do want to make it clear that I have looked at all the spoilers. I did look at a lot of the leaked gameplay. This stuff is deep game craziness. And I do want to say in a very spoiler free fashion, it looks Freaking incredible. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Anybody who even attempted to say God of War Ragnarok is going to be DLC, you guys are cope. Like, God of War Ragnarok, now that I've seen... I'm going to look at this real quick on my, my screen. I'll let you guys know if it's cope. Uh, God of War Ragnarok. Kratos versus Thor. I'm going to just let it play on my end. So much raw freaking gameplay. It looks absolutely perfect. Anybody who's even the boss attempting fight game to say that Dude, like I'm watching the gameplay right now. It's literally that same magnetic dodge fucking bullshit. Doesn't look very good that this is just some stupid Sony cash grab. You guys are cultists. This game looks absolutely grandiose. Uh, I, I just looking at the gameplay, obviously I've not tried it myself yet. It does look like game of the year material, which is a very high. It looks like the exact same shit we got in 2018. Like the typical dodge, block, fucking roll type crap. I don't know, man. Not for me. 
high bar because I put 500 hours into Elden Ring. I'm still playing Elden Ring. Bro, how the fuck are you going to compare God of War to Elden Ring? Dude, the fact that people are even willing to make that comparison tells you that fucking God of War has lost its identity completely. Because, bro, if you think that God of War should be anything remotely similar to a fucking Souls clone, that's just completely objectively wrong. I'm sorry. That shit is awful. And I do think that from a story and lore standpoint... I can't show it. I'll get fucking struck. And Even a gameplay standpoint, God of War Ragnarok may surpass it which is just bonkers to even consider. Now, the wrinkle to this entire situation that's kind of funny to me is that people have somehow decided to stir up these leaks in a way to involve it in the console wars. Um, some people online that are incredibly bored mostly seem to be, it seems like there's a lot of Xbox dudes, and, I, and I'm not trying to stereotype here, there's a lot of people who only own an Xbox, which I'm not hating on, but they don't have any games to play this year. You know, they have great third-party stuff. I see a lot of Xbox people tweeting about, you know, the next Halo Infinite update or something like Gotham Knights, something like that. But they don't have like a big, huge game to be hyped about. So for some reason, a lot of the most diehard, obsessive Microsoft fanboys seem to be laser focused on hating God of War Ragnarok and ruining the experience of PlayStation gamers. I've actually seen bot accounts. That you mean like when PlayStation fanboys used to post the fucking endings to games that came to uh, Xbox at a later date, like fucking Near Automata? Hmm, that sounds familiar. <laughs> that sounds fucking familiar. All right, so I just watched the Thor boss fight. It looks like a carbon copy of the first boss fight from God of War 2018. Like, it's that same kind of, like, dodge, block, attack. Dodge, block, attack. And the enemies are, like, magnetically attracted to... It, it looks like a carbon fucking copy of 2018, so... Yeah, watching that gameplay does not reveal anything I didn't already fucking expect. They just spam God of War Ragnarok spoilers. If you even tweet about how you're excited about the game, they will automatically reply with a lot of this leaked gameplay, these major boss fights, these big reveals, simply to try and ruin your experience. Uh, to those people, touch grass. Like, I'm not a doctor, but if I was a doctor, I would prescribe you a lot of grass because... Please, touch some grass. Says the guy who beats 300 video games a year. Because certainly, you're at the very least vitamin D deficient. Just put a little bit of sun on your skin. I am, I'm blown away. As somebody that now has looked at every bit of the spoilers I possibly can, it does seem like these leaks have seemingly come from Mexico predominantly, which is kind of funny. That's because the discs are made in Mexico, I'm pretty sure. I believe the physical disc, like Blu-ray discs, are made in Mexico that come to the U.S. A lot of the gameplay clips have Spanish subtitles. So, uh, I, I mean, all of this, though, I think the conversation here is about to get incredibly interesting coming up here in, I guess, two weeks. We're officially two weeks from the launch of God of War Ragnarok. I believe reviews for the game are dropping here in just a couple days. The original review embargo for all the major journalists is approaching very, very soon. And I think... On I'm pretty sure, like, almost every Xbox game on the back has it printed, disc made in Mexico. I'm pretty sure that's actually a thing. I've seen it, because, like... On some of the plastic for some of my Xbox games, I've noticed that. Like, it's in blue print. Like, I've bought a bunch of sealed Xbox games recently. And it's, like, in blue print on the back of the case on the fucking uh, shrink wrap. And it says, disc made in Mexico. So, I think that's where Blu-rays are actually, like, printed and shit. Uh, blue Eyes White Dragon with the two. My doctor just prescribed me grass. And now I see light. Congrats, man. Just don't go too fucking crazy. Honestly, it's going to be a very interesting time because, well, I mean, I really enjoyed stuff like Gran Turismo 7, despite its stupid microtransactions. I super enjoyed God of War 2018. I'm obsessed with Spider-Man and I'm excited for Spider-Man 2. I loved Horizon Forbidden West. I do think that what we have on our hands... Sony! ...hands now is a true contender for best PlayStation game.
but maybe I'm overhyping myself. Maybe I'm getting too excited because of how epic a lot of this stuff looks. <sighs> Brit fan gaming with the two, the cartel are leaking gameplay. That's right, bro. El Chapo's down there uh, leaking the gameplay in fucking Mexican prison. Or I think he's in U.S. prison now, right? Or is he back in Mexico? I don't fucking know the logistics of that shit, but that's who it is. <sighs> okay, taking a deep breath, taking a step back. I love you guys very much. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to try and avoid all spoilers, now is the time to probably mute the term Ragnarok because I'm sure a lot of freakazoids are about to be spamming every picture they possibly can and trying to mock what looks like to be an utter masterpiece. But what do you guys think about it? Are you excited for God of War Ragnarok or does this eh. just seem like a big old mess to you? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already and please keep dreaming. Also, here's a drunk picture of me as Waluigi from a party last night. It was uh, very fun. I'm a very bad Waluigi. People kept walking up. This is, this is dead true. People kept walking up to me at this party and going, are you Wario? Do I look like Wario? I'm wearing a purple, f f you know what? Oh my God, bro. Do I look like, oh Jesus Christ, man. L weirdos. Do I look like Wario? Weird. Oh my God. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up live. Cringe. Oh my god, bro. Alright, let me see if I can find this shit. Let's let's watch the follow-up to I'm 30 and don't have any friends. Like this guy, I don't know, bro. His videos are just so weird. I got stood up. Damn, dodged a bullet. Oh, here it is. Yeah, 32 years old and no friends. One year later, trying to survive. Bruh. The title is even worse than I fucking remember. But yeah, basically, let's just watch it. Like, what the fuck is this title, bro? Cam Jesus Christ, Lost 331 here, and we're back. We're back, everyone. We're back. Trying to survive? Back. I wanted to talk about something today that I haven't thought about in a minute, and it's actually kind of popped up a lot recently, and I don't really know Dog, what with a room like that, is it any wonder you don't have friends? Like, I ain't trying to be mean, but holy fuck. Why, but I also, uh, I was in a, a weird headspace the last couple days and started getting real, real down and out and kind of bummed out, and I, I had to revisit some things. That uh, ha had to do with a video I put out. I live in D.C., bro out a couple of years ago and by a couple of years ago i mean one year ago because <laughs> i'm a, from alabama and math is not my strong suit uh nor what the fuck does that have to do with being from alabama like i said man this guy plays a fucking caricature like oh i'm from alabama so i must be a fucking dumbass redneck who can't add two plus two jesus christ man i'm just this guy really is irritating to me or his memories but I put out a video talking about, oh my fucking god, bro. About how I don't have friends. I'm, I'm 32 <laughs> now, so uh, we're, we're a year and a half later. And um, I'm going to kind of follow up on that. And That's all right, man. I am literally surrounded by the world's largest collection of anti-missile defense systems on planet Earth, bro. We Gucci out here in D.C. And talk about my headspace recently. That's kind of got me understanding why i made that video in the first place but the big question you're probably thinking to yourself is did you fuck your sister how is it one year later especially after that video you know r received almost 1.7 million views since then which was very unexpected and i didn't plan on releasing that video at all um you fucking shouldn't have it made you look like a clown. I just talked about it on stream one day, and I didn't mean to get emotional, so I apologize. Where did you find the leaks? Oh, should I just closed out of it? Give me a second. I'll pull it back up. History, Kratos versus Thor, full fight. Here, I'll just link it real quick in the chat if you want it. Um, oh, shit. Fuck. Let me uh, make sure that's actually right there. All right, that should be it. I believe. Yeah, that's it. There you go. For that, it just kind of happened. And um, because I had a revelation whilst whilst filming that, I guess. 
Um, but I talked to a few friends. Dude, what the fuck is wrong with this camera quality? Is it just YouTube? And they were like, nope. dude, you should release it. So begrudgingly, I released it. And at the time, I was getting, you know, swatted. And a lot of uh, channels were dedicated to tearing me apart. And, you know, I was just really worried about the backlash. But it, honestly, it changed my life in a good way because I've met a lot of really cool people because of it. But I find myself right back to to where I was when I filmed that. Um, Need more donos. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit. And it's going to be a little cringy, so bear with me. But... I was thinking a couple days ago how I like one of one of my acquaintances kind of planned a a surprise birthday party for me, <laughs> um, and uh, you know it, it was you know it was out of nowhere and I didn't expect it because you know to be honest I I don't celebrate birthdays um, because I don't have any friends that live around me now. <laughs> I don't celebrate birthdays because I don't think it's a big fucking deal. Like, it's just celebrating one year closer to fucking death. If you watch that video... I'm not a big birthday fan. Video, a lot of people misconstrue... Only holidays I really like are uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, personally. Everything else kind of just like, eh, I don't give a fuck about it. With that video, because they didn't watch it all the way through. But I found out that my online friends... YouTube community and people I've met through it were indeed real friends, but it is very hard like coping with, you know, being alone in everyday life. You know, I mean, you can have friends. Yes. And you can talk to those friends online and that is great. That is a great, great supplement. Um, but when you're not seeing anyone every day and you know, you're not getting that camaraderie of like a group and you know, it, you get what I'm saying. So you don't see them every day. So it kind of feels like you're alone. And to be honest, you can be around a lot of people and still feel alone. And that's how I am a lot of the time. Um, I, I, I suffer from um, imposter syndrome. Uh, I, I suffer. What the? F All right. Can somebody explain to me what the fuck imposter syndrome is? Like, it's like people can like, I just don't feel like I belong in the position I'm in. It's like, bro, what? how does that even fucking make sense, dog? Because like you had to take the action to get to where the fuck you are from a lot of those things where I don't really feel like I belong anywhere and I get really quiet and I disassociate and it's something I can't really help. But I find myself right back in the same place because one of my acquaintances planned a birthday party for me this year, actually. So this is a few months ago. And I... Among Us? Uh-oh. They took me to this place and it was like, you know, kind of like a... You could tell it was kind of like a, you know, you know happy, happy, fun times, bowling alley thing. And um, I was like, oh, wow, I didn't expect bitch syndrome. It's called imposter syndrome. I don't I have no fucking idea. I've heard it before. I've heard it described as like being like you feel like you don't belong in the position in life you are in right now. Like it makes no fucking sense. Like the position you're in in life right now is a direct result of your fucking actions. Like how the fuck do you feel like you don't belong at that position? Like that, It makes no sense to me this and it's really embarrassing actually because no one showed up at all it was just me <laughs> <laughs> and that really messed me up and i know it's stupid but you know no one showed up and it made me feel like a, a dumbass and <laughs> timothy marco the two imposter syndrome is believing you're a fraud well maybe he has it accurate i don't know i hate feeling like that like you know, sitting there by yourself like a dumbass. So I was just told to show up and no one showed up. So that, it almost felt like Carrie when they dumped the blood on her. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's not the same thing, but so that happened. And for some reason, I totally repressed that. Like it bummed me out for like two days and then I forgot about it. And then uh, I, two days ago, I was sitting there and I thought about it and it just threw me over the edge. And I don't know why that happened. And I'm planning, I'm planning a thing right now. I really love Halloween, guys. I, Halloween is the sheet. Spooky stuff, I live and die for. Prefer. Oh, God, bro. Is he going to bring out another Alabama stereotype and put on his old family ghost costume and go scare the locals? Like, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is that his Halloween costume? He's going to break out Grandpa's Klansman cloak or whatever the fuck? Jesus Christ. You know, since he loves these Alabama stereotypes. 
preferably die for, <laughs> but I love the spooky stuff. There is only one thing that I like almost as much. Burning crosses. Is a good set of turd cutters, and that's Halloween. Like the vibes and shit. I decorate my whole house, man. I go crazy. I, I was planning this thing, you know, and um, I have a lot of people I'm wanting to invite to this thing that I'm planning. It's a Halloween deal, right? It's a couple days. It's like a festival, almost. <laughs> kind of. Not really. And a few of my friends I haven't seen in years, like like <laughs> close friends, like real life you know, friends I used to see every day, I invited them to this thing. And all of them said that they were going to come. And one by one, they all canceled on me. Now, look, it's not their fault if they have stuff going on. I get it. Bruh. But your mind goes to dark places when you start thinking things are more than coincidences. Like, how is it that every one of these people all are busy every time I ask if they want to, you know, get a drink or hang out or just relax and do nothing? You know, um, but the last person finally canceled on me like two days ago. And then that all culminated, culminated, culminated. <laughs> I'm from Alabama. Culminated into a. Are you getting mad at him for your own ideas of him? No, literally at the very beginning of this fucking video, he goes like, I'm from Alabama, so I ain't good at the math or whatever the fuck. And plus his entire voice that he does for YouTube is a fucking caricature of a southern accent, my guy. That's the whole reason I'm saying that shit. Because he's like playing into the Alabama stereotypes. So, you know, I did the same. So, I don't know. Me remembering the birthday thing and then realizing that maybe... I have one of those personalities that started the phrase, a little bit of you goes a long way. And it, it started getting really rough. And, you know, I, I kind of panicked and I like messaged another friend that was like a very new IRL friend that's kind of also been distant. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm going to go see a show. You should come. You know, I'll buy your ticket, man. It'll be great. We'll just hang out and we'll watch some bands. And then they just, they just, they, they conversed with me up until that point, and then they, when I asked them if they wanted to do that, they just ignored me. And I'm gonna be honest. Look, if you just say no, that makes me feel a lot better than you just like, just not responding. Like that's weird. Um, and I know that's bitchy as hell for me to say. Um, and I understand totally level headedly that it doesn't really matter what people think. Or so does he not actually have a here? You want to hear what his actual voice sounds like? Dude, if you can't tell that's a fucking caricature voice, I don't know what to tell you, but Camelot. if you really want to hear what he sounds like before he started doing this fake shit, um, oldest, oh wait, fuck, where is it? Oh wait, I think it's like his most popular, right? It's like the, uh, yeah, this one. Hey everyone, Camelot331 here, and it's finally time. I've decided to finally make this video and that is a normal southern accent. Go over the details on why I left GameStop. What happened basically that day and what led me to basically walk out the door. And I've actually kind of touched on this in a previous video before. Do you not hear like how different that sounds? So if you have tenure at game He's not talking a lack of this. Like, I don't know, bro. He's doing like this character ass voice or who you surround yourself with. It's how much you value yourself, which really matters. And that's how I am all the time, man. You don't yeah, I understand. It's like 99.9% .9 of the time, but every now and then. Yeah. That other video is how a normal fucking person from Alabama talks. This is like some caricature ass shit. The 0.01% creeps in and that's what happened the last two days. So I tweeted some stupid shit about me being a bitch. And I apologize for that. Um, but that's been my headspace lately, is those exact things. And it brought me back, man, to the Friends video. And I've noticed the Friends video has been getting a lot of views lately. And I don't really know why. Um, but I do appreciate it. And a lot of people have been messaging me, and I do appreciate that as well. Um, so I figured I'd talk about that. And I guess there's a lot of lonely people out there once they hit 31. Although it is a year and a half later, you know, I feel like I'm in a better place. But I also feel incredibly alone all the time still. 
and I don't really know how to fix it. And it's it's not all the time. It's just random periods, man, where you're like, man, I'm alone as hell. Like, you just feel like you're the only damn person on earth. And then in those moments, you reach out to the people that you care about. And I have like four of them that I've, you know, spent a lot of years with. And not a single one of them it will either respond or converse or, I don't know. It just starts to feel like more than coincidences. Yeah, when you become an adult, you don't really have friends unless you work with them. That's just how that shit fucking goes, man. People want to enjoy their own fucking lives. Like, they get married, they have girlfriends, they have their own family... You know, they make new friends at work and everything. This is the thing, man. Like, people don't realize this shit. Like, most content creators are friends with other content creators. You know, just like most people are friends with their fucking coworkers. Because in order to, like, be friends with someone for an extended period of time, you need to actually interact with them frequently. That's why friends grow apart over time is because, you know, you don't have, like, that daily interaction or whatever. Like, that's why most people don't stay, like, in contact with their friends from high school or middle school or college in a lot of cases because you just don't fucking have anything in common with them anymore. Like, you live a very different life. You have different shit going on. You have your own stuff going on. And you're around other people now. But the thing is, is like these YouTubers don't realize is when your job is to fucking sit inside all day, like I don't have any fucking friends, but it's like in my area because it's like I don't fucking go anywhere. Duh. If you live all fucking day in your fucking room or whatever and don't actually go do shit and like consistently see people on like a day to day or week to week basis, you're not going to be friends with them for long. You're like, ah, maybe just people hate me because I suck. You know, sometimes you just got to accept that you suck and I might suck and I might not realize it, but I would love it if somebody told me that, Hey man, just tell me like, Hey, you kind of suck to be around. And then I could like maybe fix it and course correct. Cause that's like how I am and I'll course correct. Um, but unfortunately I, I feel like, um, I have one of those personalities and it's something I battle with every day. Nah, I ain't really lonely, bro. <laughs> I'm not really that fucking lonely. If I was, then I wouldn't be doing this shit. Damn day. And this is not as a, a happy ending as the Friends video is. The Friends video was a happy ending. And um, I don't think this is a bad ending either. It's almost like coming to terms with reality. And the reality is, you know, people just don't really care. <laughs> they, they got one, especially when they have their own stuff going on. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just... I'm the kind of person that likes to nurture friendships, especially ones that are close to me. And I start to feel like I'm the only one doing that. And I start to feel like the people I care about are putting in the most minimum effort possible, which is fine for some people, but it's not fine with me. And people keep telling me, Hey man, just surround yourself with new people that are better. And I'm like, dude, like that's what everyone says, but you don't realize if someone's going to abandon your ass when you first meet them, you can't predict that shit. I didn't think all these people would abandon my ass and never just stop being like friends to me once they moved or got in relationships and stuff. And and that's also something that spawned it recently. So I seen with the five after Benny video search Muhammad Kalakin and what and watch this video. Okay, yeah. I mean, I guess we can watch that real quick. Every one of my my friends that I would see kind of like on a regular basis, like not often, but on a regular basis. Saying the madman with the two, I have friends from middle school and high school at my college. So y'all went to like the same high school and then college. I mean, that makes sense. They're all in these new relationships with new girls. But like most people, like once you graduate high school, you never fucking talk to those people again. New guys and they just disappear, man. And that just doesn't make sense to me. When I was married, man, I still hung out with all my friends. And I'm just, why is it these people value relationships so much and they rely on relationships for self-worth? But then again, sometimes I rely on friendships for that self-worth, so I can't really be a hypocrite there. Anyways, I'm rambling, dudes. I apologize. I just wanted to re revisit my mind space and frame and talk about that friends video and talk about how far I've come. I've accomplished a lot personally, I feel like. I mean... You might not think so. And that's totally, totally warranted. <laughs> I guess. I'm just a YouTube guy. Um, but I feel like I've done a lot and I've got to see a lot of cool stuff. But for some reason, in the end, I just feel more alone than ever. Dude, it's impossible for me to be lonely 
because I have my Pokemon cards, bro. I'm just throwing that out there. Ever and uh, I don't really know what to do. A lot of people say get a dog. I have two of them. A lot of people say go to church. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> I grew up in the Bible Belt, man. I ain't going back. Some people say join the military. I don't think you realize how old I am. Also, no. That, no, wow. No, no, thank you. I don't want a real job. Thank you. Uh, like, find a hobby. Bro, I got like seven. I play guitar, I write music, I race in like a NASCAR style series. In a what the I'm fuck? I'm supposed to do. I go to the gym. <laughs> You don't make friends at the gym. Put your fucking headphones on and work out. I'm supposed to do. I go to the gym. <laughs> I don't know, guys. So his hobbies include sitting in a car by himself, working out by himself, and making YouTube videos. Bruh. Guys, I don't really know. I don't have the answers, man. I don't have the answers. Maybe you do. Can you comment down below and tell me what the hell works for you? Because I don't really know, man. I'm just, I'm in a weird ass place and I'm trying to escape it. So maybe you can help me escape it. Just comment, man, I guess. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I don't even know why I made this. I don't, I probably won't release this either. You're probably hoping you get another million plus view video, bro. Be at least be honest about it. Like no need to hide it. Like it's understandable. Why? Goodbye, Overwatch. All right, so what's this shit called? Muhammad Kalakeen? Oh, this guy? Yeah, I know this guy. So this one? I've seen this video like a hundred times, really. I'm pretty sure everybody has, but we can watch it real quick. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Joe Biden, Joe Biden. This message from Muhammad Khanakin for Faisal Khalistan for you, Joe Biden. You go check up on the doctor. You have two years. Your life is two years. Two years from now, from today to two years or one year and six months. Or... Girls at your church are thirsty? Yeah, honestly, that is kind of a truth statement. Two years. You life. I've been there too. After this one, you pass away. You go check the check up in the do doctor. This message from Muhammad Khanakin for Faisal of Kurdistan. You do do you good job for the USA for the 50 USA in two years. You do pull down Bro. young for us. I love how he has like one fucking eye closed the entire time. It's like, what the fuck? We want a Kurdistan in a new country, no more. <laughs> Iran, no more Iraq, no more Turkey, no more Suri for Facebook Kurdistan. We we'll give you Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Alright, I think that's it. Joe Alright, what else should we watch, man? Yeah, I wish I looked that good, man. He's got some great eyebrows. How dangerous is dropping a penny? Dude, this could be like a two minute video and they made it twenty two minutes. God damn. Henry Cavill's Witcher departure has the internet in flames. Don't watch Dan Alien. What the fuck? I don't need to. Exposing himself? I don't really want to watch a man expose himself. Watch the kid dancing to Benny song? Uh, Alright. Let me see. Uh... 
I've seen this video. I didn't know what this was, what it was called. You really wonder, like, if they actually think this is a fucking good idea. Oh, you're not actually gonna fucking do anything? That's why it's a little loud, so I turn it on. Dude, people have no fucking shame anymore. It's just very strange. Like, the anti-bullying fucking sentiment has made it so that everyone's just, like, not afraid to fucking do this type of shit. You should be very fucking afraid to do this type of shit, honestly. Let's see. Let's see if our f favorite friends have done anything. Got more surprising news. Nope. Oh, uh, let's see this motherfucker. What's up, my fellow? What the fuck? Oh, it's a podcast. Shitty. So, phone? Wait, what the fuck? Caves? Damn, all of his interesting shit's like behind a fucking podcast. I think he does that on purpose so people don't fucking respond to his dumb ass. Like, dude, this one where he's talking shit about the price hike, I would love to hear him fucking bitch about that, but then act like it's fine for Sony. Uh, but unfortunately, it's in a fucking podcast. Then, you know, the Xbox Series X is, or S is holding back gaming in a fucking shitty podcast. I don't want to fucking dig through all this shit. So it's like, they're literally like, it's like the JTEC tactic, basically. Like, JTEC doesn't actually upload content anymore. He just does, like, these eight-hour-long fucking live streams that people have to dig through in order to find out his fucking shitty takes. Because that way, people won't make response videos. I'm telling you, bro, these fanboys are getting fucking, you know, obnoxious to make content on. Let's just do Xbox Series S holding back. Let's just see. <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? Hey, guys and girls, and thank you for watching a, yeah, special edition of the Xbox Tester. Um, <laughs> the reason why I'm going to make this video is because I'm a little bit, yeah, I don't want to say frustrated, but I'm a little bit pissed off. I'm going to say it like that. Uh, At like pissed off? A lot of media out there uh taking like really 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 out of touch tweets for granted like it's real news and um i've been following this news for the last couple of days and i've seen so many people reacting on this uh fanboys uh really big websites uh, really really big websites taking this news for granted and that's the news that some kind of nobody indie developer that has zero clue how the series s works put out a tweet where he said lots of developers um don't dog all right i have so many issues with this this is why i do not like fucking face cam videos like bro this shit looks like it was recorded back in 2007 the camera is literally slanted 45 fucking degrees you can see the ring light reflecting in his glasses and why the fuck does he have figurines on the one fucking shelf that you can't actually see and not the one that you actually can oh my god bro it's just like it drives me fucking insane watching uh watching fucking face cam videos i don't like them at all it's very irritating and it just mm, please people use gameplay please daisy viva with the two will you watch snippets of my doom ah probably not honestly i'm keeping it a book video that doesn't really have to do anything with the stream and i saw there with the two my video bro hope most like it oh yeah we'll get to it man don't worry i'm just doing the gaming shit first 
And Oski Woski with the two. Give me two days and I'll give you times. Oh, don't sit through that shit, man. It ain't worth it. It is not fucking worth it. Seven inches? That's pretty big. Want to work on the Series S or they asked Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing about it. They asked, li <laughs> they asked Microsoft if they could drop the Series S. Are you insane? I don't really know why they would care. Why? 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 Because they don't want to fucking develop for it. Kind of self-explanatory. I don't know. I should they drop the, the the that that your incompetence in making video games or optimizing video games is a problem, a you problem. Like if a dev wants to sell less copies of a game, like who cares? <laughs> like that's their fucking L, right? then it's not a problem for everybody. You know, um, first thing first, I want a few things out of the way. Um, the Series S is a next-gen console, or right now we're almost two years into the, to the system's life. It's a new-gen console. It is, in every way. No thing, nothing. There's nothing wrong with the system. It's also a system that will be um, worked on for the complete generation of the Series X and PlayStation 5, probably even. It's a complete engineering marvel that they could make a console for less than 299 bucks with all this stuff inside of it. Isn't Microsoft losing money on this shit? I don't fucking know. I I've seen this game console go as low as 250 euros with a controller, with a SSD, with all the cables included. So it's insane. Oh my God, dude, those pixels flickering are giving me like a fucking aneurysm. For price value, what you see with this console. And to see some, yeah, low tier, and they are low tier. It's like the bottom of the bin indie developers saying stuff like yeah we all right this is boring uh let's see if we can find some anger let's see some fucking anger can we see <laughs> let's do xbox series s is trash um, Amazing Lucas. <laughs> I remember that one. Uh, eh, it's not really much. That's what I mean, man. The console fanboys are kind of just like dormant at this point. It's kind of unfortunate. It is kind of unfortunate. So let's do this. Let's do this. Where is it? Here we go, man. DSP can't invest in a new PC because he needs to buy a dishwasher. A 40-year-old man has to invest in a fucking dishwasher. I thought he was married, bro. <laughs> Dude, that shit was boring. It's like, I don't know. Like, also, the way the video was set up just really pissed me off. Like, how it was slanted, how it was, like, so pixelated. Like, it drove me insane. Like, bruh. Can't invest in a new PC because he needs to buy a new dishwasher. It's just, dude, this is like such a pitiful fucking existence. I don't know, man. Like, that's one piece of news. The other piece of news is that it is official. Yes, Elon Musk, not only has he taken control of Twitter, but he followed through on his promises. He unbanned everybody. And all hell broke loose, supposedly. I didn't see He didn't unban everybody. See it. Because I have a very limited Twitter feed. I, I limit my feed with the amount of shit that, you know, the trolling and stuff. <laughs> I set up my Twitter so I don't see any of it. Basically, I only see stuff from my viewers and fans who I follow. And I, fo I see the trends that I follow, and that's it. So I don't see the nonsense. But apparently, he, he hit the unban button, 
And you had people who were banned for like years come back. No, he did not. Um, there was one guy who I guess he got banned for saying something politically. I don't know. But he said, when I was on here before, I had 400,000 followers. But I had no one who really engaged in any of my content. Now I'm back. I have 19,000 followers and I have more engagement now. So he made a new account. He wasn't unbanned. Now than I ever did before. So essentially what Twitter had done is shadow banned my account. So no one would interact with me. Is that any, any truth to that? I don't know. There's not. Um, it's supposedly been reported. I don't know how much I believe this because I, my, ask, my question would be, where's the data coming from? But supposedly it's been reported. The use of the N-word has increased by 500% in the last 24 hours on Twitter. Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> that also could be because COD's out now. I mean, it stands to reason... If, if 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 Twitter just mass unbanned everybody at once, the people who were unbanned probably were... I do not want to be unbanned from Twitter. I want to stay banned on Twitter. I don't ever want to go back to fucking Twitter, man. I'm good. I don't need to fucking go back. Banned for doing stupid shit, and they're immediately going to start doing the stupid shit again. So yeah, I would probably guess a lot of people got banned on Twitter for being racist... And so when you open the floodgates and the, 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 you, know, you get a flood of assholes coming in, what's the first thing they're going to start doing? Being racist again. I mean, they didn't change, right? <laughs> oh, darn, I got banned from Twitter. Let me completely look in the mirror, reassess who I am as a person, and become better. Yes, anonymous $5 tipper. I agree, I have changed a lot. You know, back in the day when I started, even, you know, when I first started... Uh, when I had first moved to Washington versus now, like I said, the last two years have been a kind of an eye-opening journey for me, where I understood that making interactive content, more positive content, more fun content, is better than doing negative stuff, and I stopped doing a lot of the old kind of patterns that I used to do, and I really do feel that I'm a better content creator overall now than I ever was. It's just a shame, because it took a lot of people a lot of time to give me another shot to check my stuff out again, because they just wrote me off as a, as a bad internet meme, rather than actually giving me a shot to check the stuff. Yeah, I'm probably still banned. ...about and understand that I had changed for the better, you know? Right. No, they probably stomped their feet. They probably got upset. Me, you banned from Twitter because I was... I don't like a certain race. Me, 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 me. Censorship. Me, 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 me. Like when you were kicked out of the Twitch partner program? Right. But, uh... You know, what, what would you think would happen? Right? I mean, obviously... I mean, they're reporting this like this is big news. I'm like, it's not big news. It's what you would expect. But this is how the media covers it because they want to sensationalize everything, right? <laughs> it's stupid. I, you guys know me. I don't like these political shit. I just don't. It's so stupid. Everyone arguing on the internet about bullshit and semantics and nonsense. You know, I, I it's it's tough for me to be a middle of the road guy at 40 years old because I don't. You guys know me. I, I'm not for the left. I'm not for the right. And a lot of the times I feel both sides are wrong. When you're polarized and you're extreme, it, you're not, you don't get anything done. For me, life is a lot of compromise and working together to work out problems. And that's what these people just don't seem to figure out. They just want to have it my way or the highway. It's like that's not how life works. It's just not. That's not how you get anything done on planet Earth. There's got to be compromise. There's got to be layers of understanding. There's got to be working together to come to a common good. No one wants to work for the common good. They just want to work for my personal good. That's the problem right now with politics in America in particular. People are like, where's Phil? Is he, what's going on with Phil? Uh, it's all explained. All right. So anyway, um, I'm sure if this, if this happens and we get like the major players right now, everyone's looking to see if Donald Trump, the former president of the United States, will be unbanned on Twitter. I feel like the moment that happens is going to be a polarizing moment. What was I banned for? A gay joke. You know, if that happens. Um, I guess we'll see. <laughs> What's going to happen? It's interesting, to say the least, to be part of observing history at this time and seeing what the hell's going on. Um, He's about to meet Dollar 30. What can we all do to help end racism in our country? Well, you know it starts at home. Make sure that you're never, ever making those kind of ridiculous judgments. <laughs> This is really fucking ironic from Phil, bruh. People of color, but also calling out people who fucking do it. 
because there's so many people who just tolerate family members and friends who are racist pigs. And it's time to <laughs> cut, cut that shit out. This is 2020. It's time for us to get fucking modernized and start being accepting and getting rid of these old ass fucked up ideas that, oh, the old, that's just because my grandma just says that she hates them because, you know, that's how she grew up. Fuck that. No, it's time to grow the fuck up now. It's time to stop accepting these insanely outdated, quite frankly, harmful ways of thinking, right? Oh, it's so cute that Uncle Ted is a racist. No, it's not. It's fucked up, and he needs to shut the fuck up and change his mindset. You know what I mean? It's time for us to, to, to put, take a stand against people like that. And tell them it's not right, and, and have people stop being mistreated. Snow Carl's to me dollars, the first tip of the day. And he has a very burning question that he needs to ask all of us here today. All right? So Snow Carl asked the following. Since you had an amazing mo month support-wise, uh -oh. do you think things will look up and if things stay just as good in November, will you be able to maybe get a PC upgrade? Cheers. So it's an interesting question, and it's a fair question. Unlike some of Snow Carl's questions, it's actually a fair question. <laughs> It's a fair question because it doesn't, you know, derail the stream too much. Oh, wait, fuck. I didn't mean to do that. Shit. All right. Snow Carl's to me dollars, the first tip of the day. Port wise, do you think things will look up and if things stay just as good in November, will you be able to maybe get a PC upgrade? Cheers. That's right, dude. The man that made the fucking slavery joke literally a couple months ago is going to lecture everyone about how racism is evil so it's an interesting question and it's a fair question <laughs> where it's literally a fucking clip where he says you know shoot him unlike some of snow carl's questions it's actually a fair question okay <clears throat> so here's the deal yeah the dead space 2 playthrough is a fucking highlight all right here i'll answer the question Saying, if you just invest in PC gaming, you'd be getting so much more out of it. I don't have money to do it. I don't have money to do it. I don't have money, money to do it. it. I don't have money, money to do it. I don't have 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 money to pay my fucking taxes. You think I'm going to buy a fucking gaming PC? You're out of your mind. All right? <laughs> Jesus. Should I stay in this? I'll stay in this mode for a minute. Thank this God. month was a good month. In some ways, in particular memberships. I mean, we skyrocketed. We went from around 500 members to over 1,000. So that's like 500 memberships. And, you know, excuse me. Oh you do the math. God, bro, yes, that hurt. means a, a fair, pretty good increase in my income this month for sure. Um, also, I believe Super Chats actually were up this month Ooh, uh, significantly. Money's. I'm not 100% sure on that. I have to double check on that. But I think they were in general. I feel like Super Chats increased this month. So, yeah. I should have an increase in income come November uh, for one month. Now, there's a couple other factors involved. But. Also this month was one of the most expensive months ever because my car broke down and I had to drop over $1,100 for the car repair. And then I had to drop $200 for the tow. And that was unexpected. Those were funds that were supposed to go to important things that didn't, right? And that definitely set me back, all right? Now, what I can say is, in regards to other things like the TV breaking and the chargebacks, you guys helped with that stuff. You guys basically supported me and negated that crap. And I really, really appreciate that. Thank you for that. Those could have been really bad, but you guys got me through those tough times. All right? So, this month coming up, absolutely, for one month, I'll have a little bit of increase of income, which will be nice. Um, but then it's back to the daily begging. But I also am essentially dealing with the fallout of me doing those unexpected car repairs, okay? Now, it's how is November going to go? Uh, you know, bills coming up. You know, this week, uh, I'm going, you know, going to go grocery shopping. I actually really need a haircut real bad because uh, my hair is getting long and my wife's hair is getting long. You know, that's what I use to pay for that stuff. Um, <laughs> all tips pay pretty much for everything around here. So if you can today and you want to contribute. Okay. If I could have the whole month good, like the whole month of November, if the whole month of November ends up being good because it's all constant new releases, then that could be really excellent. All right. But here's the thing. Realistically, am I expecting DSP gaming to see even more crazy growth in November? No, I think we'll have slow, consistent growth. I think with each new release, you'll bring in a new slew of viewers who want to maybe... I'm not centered. It's, it's driving me nuts. I think with each new release, we'll bring in a new group of viewers. All right. We'll bring in people who want to sub and watch just for that particular playthrough. 
Um, they'll be here for a week or two to watch it, um, and then they'll decide whether they want to stick around or they want to take off, right? I think God of War Ragnarok will bring in a certain audience. I think, you know, Evil, uh, evil not Evil Within, uh, Evil West maybe is a unique kind of game. You know what I mean? Um, we'll see, all right? But am I expecting that in the month of November we're going to hit 2,000 members on DSP Gaming? No, I'm not expecting that whatsoever, okay? I would hope that in general this next month will bring more consistency in the amount of viewers we get on streams and things like that. But I'm not gonna. I'm not expecting insane exponential growth or anything like that. Okay. Ever on YouTube. Yeah. As soon as all those gifted subs expire, it's gonna be looking pretty dismal. Since like 2012, I'd been on the decline on YouTube, and YouTube just became more toxic, more toxic. To yeah. If he stu if he actually got like a job and like, you know, worked somewhat for his financial situation, I think people would be a lot more forgiving on him. Towards me, more nasty towards me, more negative. But it's just his absolute like uh, refusal to ever consider working that basically drives this whole fucking trolling against him. Should I do chargebacks? I mean, the thing is, man, then you got to fight with Google, not me. So good luck to you. They got lawyers. Videos and slander about me more. This is how you don't play. And at that point, I was like, how am I ever going to grow the business now? There's another couple of factors, all right, that we need to talk about. One of the major factors is my dishwasher's broken, okay? And I need to get a new one. It's just sitting there broken. Um, there's no point in fixing it. We already did the math. It's a minimum $200 to even get a repair person in here. Um, likely, a repair would cost $300, $400. And a new dishwasher is five, six hundred. Why would you pay 400 to repair it, right? So we need a new dishwasher at some point. That's kind of takes priority when it's just sitting there um, broken. So that's one thing that's a consideration. Another consideration is I do have to buy a lot more games coming up in the next couple of months. That's that's increased cost to the channel. Um, among other things, you know, there's always things going on that you guys aren't aware of. All right. There are there's things going on behind the scenes right now that you guys don't need to know about. They're, they're, they're personal things. They have nothing to do with the streams or, the, or this, you know, anything public you guys need to know about that are probably going to end up costing some money. Um, WWE champion. So I'll just say this is actually a really good time for me to have. That's the more realistic reason. An increase in income. The Christmas event in WWE champions is almost here. It's going to help. Um, but it's really about consistency, right? And yeah, I, just use some fucking paper plates, DSP. Then you don't have to do the dishes. You know, are we going to have that consistent increase in income? Or was it kind of a one-off thing this month because of the, the gifted memberships? I don't know. Let's see. Right? Let's see what happens. <laughs> Wait, what's this? Oh, no. Hold on. What was that? DSP calls review tech a hypocrite? Oh, God. My gut. My gut has been exposed. Now you all know how fat I really am. Wow, look how fat I am. Because everyone says I'm a giant blubber, a blubber dude, right? Okay. Um, what I'd like to do is do an update. In regards to the, the interview that I, I wish to do. Uh, For those who don't know, I don't know how you would not know this. Uh, last week, I made a public announcement to the internet that I'm seeking to be interviewed by someone in regards to all the slander around me on the internet to get my side of the story out there. It's not that I haven't given my side of the story, because I absolutely have. But I've only given it here on my <laughs> channel. I only have very limited reach on my channel. And the funny part is, every time that I give a jo totally justifiable and rational explanation for the things people are saying about me, people don't cover it. All they cover is the slander. They don't perpetrate or, or perpetuate my answers to I silent with the five is the people donating to him to keep this man afloat. I don't I think so, honestly. I think it's like some fucked up sense that they like literally get off on the idea of watching this dude fucking struggle. The slander, because that's not their narrative. Their narrative is Phil's evil, Phil's a jerk, Phil's a scumbag. And that's what they want, the drama all over the internet. They don't want to actually say, oh, by the way, here's his side of the story. Everything about Phil Phil's a joke. I mean, dude, honestly, I use paper plates all the time for that exact reason. All I have to do is fucking throw them out. I mean, I use, like, metal forks and everything because that's not a big deal. But, yeah, I mean, I mainly use paper plates because I don't want to have to, like, fucking wash the dishes frequently. Like, I don't mind rinsing off my fucking fork and knife or whatever. Like, I usually don't even shit, like, put shit in my fucking dishwasher. I just, like, do it in the sink real quick. Joke fills a clown, fills this, fills that. 
Also, paper plates work better in the microwave because it just heats up the food and not actually the plate. I don't want to ever, you know, do that. I'm looking for someone to give my side of the story. So I've been in contact with so many people over the last week. You guys have no idea, like dozens at this point. Um, and I've had some really cool conversations with various YouTubers of si different sizes. Um, I'm still in talks with many of them. So just so everyone knows, um, I am still in contact and talks with several different YouTubers who are interested. Uh, I'm trying to narrow it down because there were so many. In Griffin Metal Hellsinger is coming. Excited? No. I don't know what that is. Actually, that I was trying to get what, like, what, what's the angle for them? Are they really trying to cover this as, as like, a, a, an observant, neutral third party? Centipedes or roaches? I mean, I don't really care about roaches. You just step on them and kill them. Centipedes are actually, like, fucking poisonous, right? Or do they have some kind of a toxic spin to it that they're trying to benefit from? All right? And I think you can figure that out when you got guys like Review Tech USA who came to me offering to be a neutral third party and he would turn off his stream chat and he would do all these things to make it fair. And then I count- Did I hit my tips goal? Nope, I'm afraid I can't feed my dog for the next week. I countered him and said, yeah, but I don't believe that you're approaching it from that, that perspective. Literally almost every day you're talking about me on your streams. You have negative shit about me on your streams. Um, I'm a source of income and entertainment for you. You know, you've done this for your own personal benefit with absolutely no thought about how it could possibly hurt me or my business. Uh, it's kind of messed up. But people just want more money from me. You know what I mean? Like, and it's come to the point now where that's just happening constantly. And it's like, what the fuck do you expect? What, what do you want me to do? Do you try to act like you're, you're a nice guy and then you're two-faced about it? So basically, um, you know, I had this conversation with him. And I went back and forth with him a couple times. And I basically came to the conclusion, I was like, this guy is not listening to me. Yeah, I would freak out if a centipede, like, crawled across my foot. If it was a roach, I would just, like, kick it off and stomp it. I mean, dude, honestly, like, with my family being in the south and shit, like, I've seen roaches my entire fucking life. They don't really freak me out. and Just fucking stomp on them. <laughs> it's not that hard. Grab a fucking flip-flop and smack that bitch. Or get some raid. It's easy. Centipedes are creepy, man. Like, the points I'm trying to make to him are that I can't trust him because he's already made a joke out of me on his channel. He's literally already told his audience, feels guilty through his actions, all right? His actions on his streams are basically saying, Phil, I believe everything everyone says about Phil, and uh, he's guilty. There's no neutrality there. There's, I've already made my decision. If you already have a preconceived notion, how could you be neutral in an interview? You can't. That's what I was trying to explain to him. And then he comes back to me saying, oh, the reason I don't want to do an interview with Rich is because uh, I want someone to, to to basically be a paid advertisement for my channel. I saw the rent with the 10 can't feed, huh? Well, for a follow, I don't know, man. I got to pay my taxes, my fucking internet bill, my utility bill. I can't afford this. But yeah, no, it's all good. I appreciate it, man. Big ups. Channel, And I don't want a real interview. That couldn't be further from the truth. What's the point of- You don't want a real interview. You want another quartering situation where someone throws you softball questions because you're a victim of fucking woke cancel culture. Doing the interview if people don't ask me the tough questions and I don't answer them, right? There's no point in doing it then. I might as well not do it at all. The point is I don't want to do it on his channel because he's already had massive- Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't really want to do it on Review Tech's channel, like, just thinking about it. Like, if DSP is going for pure outreach, I think it'd be better to get someone like, uh, the gamer from Mars, I think his name was. The guy who did, like, the Chris Chan documentary. I think that'd be the perfect guy to do DSP's interview, or the down the rabbit hole guy. Either one of them would be perfect to do the interview, because they have huge platforms that would actually, you know- get him clouded, which is what he wants. He wants clout from the shit. Benefit from making fun of me, and he's already told his audience that I'm guilty, so there's no point in doing the interview there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you in, in the court of public opinion, if you already have someone telling you this is how it is, but then you try to, to oh, now we'll give them a fair shake, but you already told me how it is, so how am I going to give it a fair shake? You know what I'm saying? No, shut the fuck up. And <clears throat> that's what I mean. So... The funny part about it is, you, how can you tell if someone's- DSP has a massive hate boner against Keemstar. That'll never fucking happen. Truly neutral and wanting to do the right thing. Well, they'll talk to you about it behind the scenes. They won't talk publicly about it to anyone until anything's determined, right? 
Rich, over the last week, literally took every conversation we ever had. He posted them all up on the internet without my permission. He even took a private videos that supposedly he was sending just for me. He posted those up on the internet, right? And then he had a whole podcast show about how- Private videos he was taking just for me? Yo, we need to see those videos, man. What the fuck? Oh, I don't want to go on his show because I, want, I, I don't want a real interview. It couldn't be further from the truth. The guy's just an asshole. Like, he literally proved my point. He took the entire week and used me as content for his channel because he has no content. You understand that? The guy has no meaningful content. All he does is drama now. So he used his conversation with me as a way to make money again, even though he's not getting the interview. So that's the last interaction I will ever have with, with Rutech, just so you know. I'm never going to talk to the guy ever again. There's no point. The guy is a scumbag, and he absolutely proved my point of why I don't want to do the interview with him because all he's going to do is do it for his own personal gain. He has no interest on seeking truth. He has no interest on hearing another side. All he wants to do is spin drama for his channel for dollar signs. Anything for this, right? So he can literally go fuck himself. He can go fuck himself. I don't care. I want nothing to do with the guy. Nothing at all. You know, I, I just am done with him. I want someone who's going to, if they're going to interview me, they're going to truly be a neutral observer and listen to what I have to say, not have a preconceived notion, not tell their audience to, what to think, and not try to make giant bank off of me either. That's not the point, you understand? Yeah, I think the down the rabbit hole guy or gamer from Mars would be the choice to do this shit. And so, all that being said, um, this is hilarious. He said he would turn off monetization. He already made money on me all week. Of course he'll turn off monetization. He literally just had a week's worth of content. Just posting up our emails, which he shouldn't have done. He didn't have permission to do that. Just posting up the videos that supposedly he made just for me, and he posted those up. He already has a week's <laughs> full of content. Why the fuck would he... The videos he made just for me. Those were supposed to be special, and you ruined it. Care about the interview being monetized. You know what I'm saying? Then he'll do a, a two weeks of follow-up after. You know, he go fuck himself. He's done. I'm done with him. I really want nothing to do with him. He's definitely a two-faced scumbag, and I just, I'm done with that guy. You know what I mean? Like, talk about ultimate hypocrite, hypocrisy, okay? <clears throat> so I am in talks with others, all right? And it's very interesting because there's people who want to approach it from different angles. You know, I have one person, and again, unlike Rich, I'm not going to completely blow up and expose all my conversations with other people. I'm going to keep it anonymous, all right? I have one person who essentially wants to just have me as like a casual hour or so guest on their, on a show and just talk about everything on the internet. It would be like an hour. Wings of redemption can, oh my God, bro. Guest spot on a show. That would actually be fucking funny. So, um, just like normal content that they do, no big deal, okay? Then I have someone who actually wanted to make an entire kind of like expose special all right, on their channel around this. Um, I saw there with the 10, also the video I sent, no biggie, if it, uh, biggie, I get it if, uh, no, we're gonna watch it, man. I just said we were gonna do all this other shit first, but no, we'll get to it, don't worry. We will watch it tonight. And basically do something like completely different. I just wanted to run through the shit that I had planned originally, which this was on the list of shit. Different than what I had even intended. We will get to it, don't worry. Um, I got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I basically uh, was blown away by what was proposed to me, what this person had said. Basically, we're talking in-person interviews and stuff like that. And I was like, whoa, that was not even close to what I was thinking. But it was it's intriguing. It's an intriguing idea that someone actually thinks that this situation is so interesting um, that they would want to actually... Oh my god, bro. If Boogie interviewed him, I'd want to fucking blow my brains out. That shit would be so fucking boring. We have a series. Dude, Boogie would be the worst interviewer on planet Earth. I I empathize with you, Phil. I really do, man. I, I've been in a dark place like that myself when I wanted to fucking kill myself when I was eating myself. Like, dude, it would turn into a fucking pity party about him. Like, Boogie would find every single way to make every single thing talked about about him. It would be fucking obnoxious. These of in-person interviews and coverage, you know? Like, dude, the only thing Boogie knows how to talk about is how he almost fucking killed himself eight, for the 85th time. Like, oh my god, bro. How stunning and brave. You almost fucking ate a bullet for the first time this month. And then three other times next week. It's like, 
It's the same fucking routine with Boogie. He just says the same shit over and over again. I wanted to kill myself. I fucking hate myself. I hate my life, bro. Like, I'm mis- Like, just fuck off, dude. Nobody gives a shit. Quit crying wolf all the time. Like, holy fuck. You know. So, yeah. Um, I know. See, un- again, unlike Rich, I'm not going to publicize these conversations I'm having with people because this is not supposed to be for personal gain nor is it supposed to be, oh, oh look at these big YouTubers who want to do it, uh, do it with me or anything. I'm not going to talk like that. You know what I mean? Um, that's really stupid. <laughs> the bullet is the one thing he didn't eat. <laughs> Damn. All right, that was a good one, man. Um, Shit. But j- just, just for clarification purposes, you know, some people were so so silly. They were like, oh, yeah, the biggest, the, the absolute biggest YouTubers were going to want to cover this. I mean, do you really think that? <laughs> Again, without blowing names up or anything, because I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. I feel that's disrespectful. Imagine Boogie interviewing a cancer patient. He'd be like, yeah, I know how you feel. I was on the verge of death as well when I wanted to fucking kill myself. <laughs> Bruh. I really do. I feel that shit would be fucking hilarious. Like, Boogie tries to compare his own life to some kid who's, like, dying of fucking cancer. And then tries to, like, act like his life is somehow fucking worse because he ate himself into being a fucking just walking casket. I feel it's disrespectful if you're having a talk with someone behind the scenes and it involves some kind of business or it involves some kind of situation where... You know, there's a proposition of something that could happen in the future that may be beneficial to both sides. Why are you going to blow that up and expose every piece of information about it on the internet? And it's funny because some people are like, oh, well, there's nothing legal that says that you can't post emails or talk about it. I mean, you're right, but there's an air of professionalism. And when you have someone who literally posts every piece of everything on the internet, there's a, there's obviously, you know that person's a complete unprofessional jerk. And the only reason they're doing it is for clout and for them to get attention. And we don't want to give him attention. And when you mention every two seconds, you're giving him that attention. Uh, You know, that's why I'm not telling you every step of the way, posting shit up and telling you all this stuff. Because, you know, this is going to be talks that are likely going to be ongoing. And, you know, every day, I don't have time every day to talk to these people. Um, You know, I have a series of different paths that I'm talking. Remember, I've said to people... I would talk to them via Twitter and email. Now I do. Now I have like a bunch of people I'm talking with at once. Like, oh God, I'm going back and forth, back and forth. And I hope I don't lose track of this stuff. Um, I, I'm a busy dude. I barely have any free time to do anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, man. Oh my God. That was a good one. The insane rant. <laughs> Dog, DSP. Like what was the, there was another thing. I don't think it's on this one. What was it? Maybe it was Snort Brunel. $17 in tips. Uh Uh-oh. I saw one. I lost $300. I think we watched something similar to that. I don't know, man. I forgot where I saw it. But anyway, I, Siler, let's do your video. Since uh, you're just asking about it. We'll watch that. Uh, paste. All right. I will say, as long as there's not like some racist shit, we will watch it. But. Oh my god. Is it this dude who's playing it or this guy? In the morning, but not again. Okay, yeah. now, now I know. Snort Hogan? I'll check that next. We'll just watch this video real quick. Goody. It's your boy Ryan Sherlock. I'm probably now. I'll be right in. Dog, why do people do that shit? The motherfuckers not understand, like, nobody wants to watch a fucking intro at the beginning of a fucking video. Like, get to the point, people. I don't know. I can't stand when people do that shit. One of the best fucking pranks is the people that do, like, the thing where they lay down on the bench when somebody's about to sit down. That shit's fucking hilarious. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Suck him down with my chopper, yeah. Yo, this dude's not even wearing earbuds at the gym. What the fuck? With my chopper, duck, duck, suck him till he suck her. Uh huh. He can't take this dick, get him wide open. Shoot him with the cum that faded light. Duck, duck, suck him down with my chopper. Oh, yeah. All right, that's more accurate, bro. I never see anyone at the gym without fucking earbuds in. Like, never. What's that? Can you just like turn it down just a little bit? Oh, I forgot my um I left my headphones at my place, so I just had I brought my speaker. Can you just turn it down just like a little I like can't even hear my own music. Oh okay, like, I can um do I just got like a few more sets. She's being obviously very chill about that shit. This. That's cool. Alright. I'm actually kinda surprised. I'm be kinda pissed. What a feeling stood tall. Dude, there used to be this guy, like, at my old gym, he used to do this really weird fucking workout. And it would, like, do these beep noises, like, every 30 seconds, and he would have to switch what workout he was doing. But it was, like, so fucking loud. And it would, like, literally ring through the whole fucking gym. I'm trying to think what the fuck it was called. But it was, like, basically, he would put his phone on a speaker... And it would play, like, this really fucking obnoxious, like, workout music. Then every 30 seconds, it would let out, like, this loud-ass fucking beep. And then he would switch his exercise, and it was really fucking weird. And he would do it for, like, an hour and a half every single day. But he would, like, alternate between, like, four or five different fucking exercises. It was, like, the most bizarre fucking shit I've ever seen. And, like, during COVID, when that gym was closed... He would do it in the fucking parking lot, man. Like, I kid you not. He literally would fucking do it in the fucking parking lot. <laughs> it was the weirdest shit ever. Like, why the fuck did you drive to the gym parking lot when it's fucking closed? Oh, did they pass up my booty? Quit being silly. I know for a fact you did get wet inside my booty. It's funny how the distance makes your dick look so small <laughs> and the sperm that one shot through me can't get to me at all it's time to see what i can do i'll suck you slow you till you spew no that dude's just like yeah fuck that shit uh, no tongue no clothes for me he can't take this dick get him water hold up I don't know what's funnier, the music or the like fucking four pound weights he's holding, like bro. Suck you, slow you till you spew. No. <laughs> Those are like fucking five pounds, bro. Draw no tongue, no clothes for me. He can't take this dick, get him water. Shoot him with the cum that faded like it. I'm on that dick straight, get it, get it. Suck that cocky, nut it on my chin. On my chinny chin chin. Yo, I suck 30 different men. Choking on my dick and might just squirt up at your mans. Squirt! We fucked in the morning, but not again. Yeah. Oh, I fucking hate doing that. Yeah, I'm gonna take that dick in my booty hole. I'm gonna ride into my booty hole. So I'm gonna take that dick in my booty hole. They should have played the Ford driver theme. Have you guys ever heard that? Fuck. I need to find that meme. Oh, I'm gonna ride into my booty hole. So I got the dildos in my back. Big dick in my ass. Come drip on my back. Booty stack, give it a slap. Ride him like a horse. Fuck him on his porch. I've been in that orgy. They just fuck me till I'm sore. Can't nobody rape my cousin. Can't rape my cousin. Fall in this pussy 
all day. Yeah, me pussy so good, I'm on a trip to the bay. Soon as he put it in, that nigga calling me gay. I'm like, poppy. Sitting on that nigga feeling wetter than a bitch. In a bitch. I took your cock and rode it till I shit. Yeah. Wait up on that nigga with the booty looking nice. Yeah. Yeah. A number on his dick, I sucked it twice. Squirt. I'm I'm down with my I like sending nudies, pictures of my booties. You can keep that coochie, fuck her, then he pooed it. Can't nobody rape my cousin. Can't rape my cousin. Can't nobody rape my cousin. Can't rape my cousin. Can't rape my cousin. Yeah, I'm gonna take that dick in my booty over. See a trick that's worth it. Juggle them balls in my mouth, deep throw circus. Drop something, pick it up slow on purpose. Watch me bend over, come daddy and hurt this freak club bitch. I'm sorry, I can't help it. He don't want me fucking nobody else. What's that? This is your workout Yeah, it's my workout music. Is, is it okay if I keep playing it? I'm gonna just, I got a few more sets to do. Okay, Cool, thanks. He's selfish. Should have saw the face on that nigga when he felt this. Coming all down his dick, warm and melting. Remind ya, I'm kinda. With my chopper, got the suck him till he suck him. Uh huh. You can't take this dick, get him water. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Shoot him with the cum that fed him. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Can I link this video? Yeah, I can grab it. Here. There you go. Yeah, I don't know how he didn't get kicked out, honestly, bro. Like, my fucking gym, like, literally, they don't even let you fucking film in there. They're really fucking, like, strict about that shit. Is this the fucking video? Hold up, I may have to send it to myself. Oh, yeah, that's it. Shit, let me send this to myself real quick. Give me a second. Bruh. I saw this on Insta. This is like a long time ago. Damn. I had to scroll back well into my fucking downloads on my phone. I saw this shit on Instagram a long time. All right. Let me send that. Here, this is another sus song for you guys. I had to go way back. Um, hold up, I gotta open it. My uh, when I there we go. This is an old fucking meme, like two, three years ago. Well, I guess it's not really old, but you know. But yeah, it says no one told me they made a song about Ford drivers. This shit is like maximum fucking sauce, bro. This shit is mad fucking sus. All right. When I feel that touch of a man, it gets me excited when he runs his hands down on my thighs and then he gets a tight grip all on my cheeks and then he kisses me on my neck. Boy, you know just how to make me scream when you give me a spank. You're always in my dreams and you're all that I think about. Boy, come around here some more. I need you clawing my back. But yeah, I have a friend that's like obsessed with Ford trucks, so I downloaded this to send it to him way back. But yeah, that song, this that song I just played, like that's probably the most sus song I've ever fucking heard. Personally. I don't know if there's a full version out there. Y'all can do the research if you want, but there you fucking go. It reminded me of that. Uh, Julie Denno with the five finally ordered my Steam Deck. Should have it Wednesday, and I can't wait. Hope you've been well, Griffin. I appreciate it, and that's awesome. Yeah, the Steam Deck's fire, so you'll probably enjoy it, but I've been doing good. Hopefully you have done as well. Appreciate it. Nah, Cat Griffin doesn't have friends. Bullshit, bro. I have lots of friends, but I don't have a Ford truck, so I'm in the clear. What was my friend's video? He loud. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Griffin has that song downloaded? Yeah, I do. That's why I just sent it to myself. I got that shit unlocked, bro. I got the greatest hits of our generation. 
Wait until you listen. I've heard Ram Ranch. I think it's all right. Not anything that great. I don't know, bro. The Ford song, I think, is pretty fucking funny. What's the song? I have no idea what the fucking song name is. I'm sure if you look up, what was it like? When I feel that touch of a man, it gets me excited. I'm sure if you look that shit up, you can find it. I'm not going to, but if you want to take it upon yourself, you can more than go for it. All right, let's hear another thing. So what is this shit? What is Oh, my God. Which? Let's watch this. Activision and Infinity Ward are clowns. Let's get our uh, daily dose of Call of Duty Rage. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the full launch of Modern Warfare 2. We're about 48 hours. Why don't you want to search that, man? Are you homophobic? Hours into this game's life cycle, as you guys saw with yesterday's video, there are so many problems, so many bugs. The game itself, for lack of a better phrase, has been a complete dumpster fire since launch. I don't think so. My KD has been a complete dumpster fire, but that's another topic entirely. And surprise, surprise, nothing has gotten better so far. In fact, things are only tending to get worse as more and more players are being falsely banned. I covered it in yesterday's video. A buddy of mine who doesn't cheat in video games at all, like I was playing with him last night. We were in Discord. He didn't even play that long. He played for like an hour and he woke up the next day trying to get a couple matches in before work. Dude's permanently banned and here we got Jake Lucky putting this out there that there is a serious false ban problem going around for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. People are being perma banned for cheating and appeals are instantly denied. I have received hundreds of replies and DMs including from people I trust not to be cheating. Reply if you've had a similar issue and if you go through the thread it's ridiculous the amount of people that are being banned but also Activision it's kind of funny it's like Halloween right but yeah, the only flashes I've had in the game has been like a couple times, like character models will flash, which is kind of weird. I don't fucking know why. Yeah, Jake Lucky is a fucking... Mm, I hate that fucking guy. He's such a fucking, like, little... He's like a fucking hall monitor, bro. He's like that fucking really nerdy kid that wants to make sure no one's having fucking fun. He's just a loser, bro, honestly. He's like one of those people that's really pissed off that other people are famous for actually, you know, being entertaining or whatever. And the only reason he's semi-relevant is like trying to pull those people down and he fucking hates that fact. Activision has this witch hunting on their side, which is why they're getting away with this, right? So the reason why they're getting away with this is they have a problem with Rico Chat. The Rico Chat's anti-cheat is Rico Chet, let's go, dude. Rico Chet, not Ricochet. Rico Chet. It's not working as intended, especially on PC and especially on the Steam platform. And as all these people are getting banned for no reason, and they take to social media trying to get their accounts back, they're met by other Call of Duty fans saying, well, just quit cheating. Just quit cheating, bro. Obviously, the anti cheat is flawless. It's perfect. I'm just going to keep licking the boots of Activision. It's a perfect system. And you. Didn't Vanguard have Rico chat? I never had an issue with it. You were cheating. Had to have been, right? Prove you weren't. And you can't prove a negative. That's the problem here, right? So Activision has not said a word about this so far. Things are only getting worse. More people are being banned every single day, if you play on PC especially. And one guy, this is brought to my attention. It's actually pretty hilarious. One guy who made this website, Antivision Blizzard, actually got his account back. Now, this was right before Modern Warfare 2 came out, but it's also similar problems that we've had before with the Rico Chat anti-cheat. This dude claims he got his state's attorney general involved, and once that happened, Activision's like, all right, but well, we still detected some tampering, but we're going to go ahead and reverse your ban. There's other stories out there you can find online where as soon as people that are being falsely banned, like they basically... Bro, this man literally contacted his fucking state's attorney over a COD account? Holy shit, man. They spend their money. Damn. They get banned for God knows what reason, no reason mostly, and then they actually decide, you know what, I've got some money to throw around, I'm gonna fight this, and when they do fight it, they don't even have to go to court. As soon as, like, any sort of, like, legal team gets involved, Activision's like, alright, we'll reverse the ban, we're sorry, our bad, and then they just act like nothing ever happened, right? This stuff pisses me off, man, it really does. Obviously, I, I've been covering this kind of stuff here on the channel for a while, but especially when it happens to a friend of mine, I mean, it could have been me just as easily, I don't think they would do it to me, just because they know the amount of shit they would get on oh yeah dude they, they're terrified of uh 
Nero's Cinema. I had to think about that for a second. They're probably quaking in their fucking boots at the idea of the amount of shit they would get from fucking Nero Cinema talking shit about Call of Duty like he does every single fucking day on the internet for the past 10 years. They are quaking in their boots. On YouTube, should they ban me for just no reason whatsoever? It would be pretty bad. But when it comes to like people that don't have a yeah man platform, people that don't have a voice to speak up for themselves, you know what I mean? They're just banning these people. Dude spent a hundred dollars on the vault edition of the game, played for two hours, and now is permanently banned. Can't play the campaign, can't play multiplayer, can't play private match, can't play spec ops. They just stole his money. I'm guessing it has something to do with having some sort of mod software installed on your computer. That would be my guess. And it's happening to so many other people out there as well. And Activision's freaking out because see how proud they are of hashtag Team Rico chat and how perfect. <laughs> it just kills me a little bit inside every time he says fucking Rico chat. Perfect their anti-cheat is. It's fucking awful is what it is. Activision. Dog, how do you play first-person shooters and know things about guns and not know what a ricochet is? <laughs> oh my god. Activision is a company. I mean, that's that's more funny than anything else. I don't know, man. That has more money than God. This game's being worked on by how many studios and how many employees, and they're banning people just out of nowhere. And I'm sure there are some people out there that are cheating, but the way they have their anti-cheat set up is not conducive to a healthy game launch, and it's ruining the experience for so many people. I know I'd be done with this game if they banned me right away. And that's right, man. I'm getting my fucking tongue ready for Activision's boot. I need Bobby to give me that uh, COD creator code. Then basically just took my money. And even if they do give me my account back several weeks or several months down the road, fuck those guys. Like they just literally stole from me for no reason. I'd be so pissed if that happened. But continuing on here, I know you guys have heard the death pretty much all the people that are being banned, but somebody needs to mention it. You know, Call of Duty's putting out these tweets saying, in this house we play Modern Warfare 2. I'm like, based. How about you address the unfair banning you're putting out for people? And there's a bunch of... In this house, we do play Modern Warfare 2. If you don't, then you can either... Either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Great responses to it, because lots of people are being banned. It's freaking ridiculous. But we have a number of other issues that are still remaining on top of that, right? The party crashes, right? The amount of people that... <laughs> this is a prime issues. example of why I don't want to go back to fucking Twitter, bro. That are still... This is so fucking cringe. Why do you have a Republican fucking... Oh, dude, I fucking hate Twitter. Like, these are the type of people that you'll get into arguments with. They'll have, like, their fucking political party's logo in their fucking profile picture. Dude, this is literally the perfect example of Twitter right here. People who are obsessed with fucking politics to the point where they make a fucking political party their profile picture, dog. That shit is sad remaining on top of that right the party crashes right the amount of people that simply can't even play the game if any word claims that they have deployed a mitigation for party related crashes and then they put this tweet out right here saying we are disabling attachment tuning until further notice to investigate crashes for users with five attachments tuned if you currently have a tuned attachment equipped you'll need to unequip and re-equip it to your loadout so basically for playing the game and using the features that they added to the game your game's gonna start crashing and fun fact if you crash to me oh my god man no game has ever had technical issues before many times are we forgetting gta online that's one of the things that triggers rico chat to ban you so <laughs> rico chat just fun fact right there we still have flashing going on for so many people that play the game how many of you have had this little situation right here happen this clip is from my brother and again like all this stuff is personal to me you know like my game has crashed like 30 times my buddy got banned for no reason my brother is like having seizures over here dealing with his game constantly flashing and flickering in fact there was somebody on the battle net launcher earlier it's like one of the like promoted streamers or whatever they do over on battle net and they were playing modern warfare 2 you open up that person's stream they have the exact same flashing issue it's freaking man. ridiculous man so i haven't encountered this but it was definitely in the beta i mean people have stuttering issues as well i feel vindicated 
I wonder if it's like some weird setting on PC. I really do. Like when I thought of like what kind of video I was supposed to make yesterday and like what I was going to discuss my first video of the Modern Warfare 2 life cycle. I've definitely had this happen where like the fucking entire map disappears. And then also I had the glitch. Remember when I got tagged by the recon drone and like my whole fucking screen looked like somebody turned the brightness up to fucking maximum. All that came to mind was this game. I did have that glitch. I remember that when I got fucking hit with the uh, recon drone or whatever the fuck. It's a dumpster fire. And I feel vindicated because it really is. Here we are about 48 hours. I don't know, man. Honestly, I have not had that bad of an experience. Then Infinity Ward. Vanguard was way more fucking broken at launch than this shit is i don't know maybe they're pulling a page out of sledgehammer's book and they're going to take their vacation i don't know because they're not doing shit to fix any of this stuff people are being banned left and right people can't even get their game to properly run there's still no word on combat records or challenges or leaderboards or anything like that like the game feels more like a beta than the actual beta did and i are you fucking kidding me hell no dog the beta was buggy as shit Dog, like literally every single fucking time you died, the whole screen would fucking strobe. Don't know how that works. <laughs> it doesn't no, make any no, no, sense no, 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 to me no. whatsoever, dude. But such is the the beta was way fucking worse. Way of things here in the Call of Duty franchise. It seems like every year the launches are typically pretty bad, but I don't think it's hyperbolic to say this is the worst launch that we've had, at least in recent memory, probably ever, because this is freaking horrendous. You know, 11 maps at launch or 10 maps at launch. Some of the maps aren't even there. Constant crashes, people being banned, no stat tracking of any kind, skill based matchmaking. They didn't add. The stat tracking's there. The fucking feature to look at it is just not. That's all. Your stats will be visible as soon as they add the barracks. Relax, dude. I know you can't compare who's the best MLG pro player right now, but don't worry. The feature will be added soon. Oski Woski with the two. My cousin had that issue. Just restart the game. Okay, there you go. A simple fix for a simple problem. Seven inches? That's pretty big. Add that feature they said they were going to where lobbies were supposed to start staying together. That's not happening. What is happening? What has gone? Yeah, I don't understand like this obsession with going, oh my God, bro, what's my KD? Right so far with Modern Warfare 2. Here I am wanting to do like my review, my impressions of the game. There's a lot of core gameplay elements that are new to this game that I want to cover in depth, but I can't quite do that until the whole game is out. Like I don't want to do a review or impressions of this game until it freaking releases. Like, what are we playing? Dog, why the fuck is he so angry? Right here, some sort of tech demo? Like, what the fuck? This is the most incomplete, buggy, abomination of a Call of Duty game I think I have ever seen. That's Cap. And Infinity Ward hasn't been saying shit. You know, I understand it's hard if you're a big studio like that, if you're a big company, there's lots of PR, lots of red tape, but at the same time, Dog, looking at your stats in multiplayer is not a missing gameplay feature. There's a huge difference between not being able to pick fucking team deathmatch and not being able to look at how many fucking wins and losses you have overall. That's a major fucking difference. If Halo didn't have a fucking leaderboard at launch, I wouldn't have even fucking noticed because I've never opened a Call of Duty leaderboard since, like, Advanced Warfare. So, no, like, that's not even comparable. The shit that Halo was missing at launch is way fucking worse than anything Call of Duty is missing. Time. If they were to come out and say, oh, no. So, this is what's... Com like, if you couldn't play Team Deathmatch in COD, then that would be comparable. But that's not the case. Causing challenges not to appear. Leaderboards are supposed to be there, but this is the reason why it's not working, and we're working around the clock to get it fixed. That museum map that was also buggy as hell during the beta, and we had to remove it from the beta, and it's also still not here in the full launch of the game. Well, it turns out that map is like scuffed at a fundamental level, and we don't know if it's gonna be able to release. Like if they were just to have some transparency with the player base, that would be helpful. But no. We just get like, hey, don't use weapon tuning or your game's going to crash. And also, we're not going to mention this because it's not supposed to be known. But, you know, if your game crashes too many times, Rico Chet's going to pick up on that. You're going to get banned. So just have Rico Chet. I love gaming with the two. I had one match that looks like I was high on life. Yeah, I had that one match where, like, I got tagged by a recon drone and it literally looked like the fucking sun moved, like, halfway towards the earth and just, like, literally washed everything out with light. It was really weird.
Have fun with that. Thanks for the seventy to a hundred dollars, Jeff. Yeah, I don't like the UI. They shouldn't have got fucking Hulu designers to make it, bro. Everybody knows Hulu has like one of the worst fucking UIs in the streaming app, like ecosystem, whatever the fuck. Fuck. God, this shit pisses me off, dude. <sighs> you don't say. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. <laughs> Hopefully tomorrow will be better. Hopefully, you know, I talked about in yesterday's video how we need one of those big day one patches that most AAA games seem to need to have nowadays. Maybe that's going to happen tomorrow. Maybe it'll be a day three patch, but somehow I'm doubting it. Somehow I have a feeling we're going to be dealing with this shit up until season one. And then when season one comes out on November 16th with the launch of Warzone 2 and DMZ, somehow that's going to break the game even further. And <laughs> it's just going to get worse somehow. That, that's what I see happening right now because I have no faith in these people man I, I saw a comment on yesterday's video and i agree to make cooks in the kitchen you know if you have so many different studios all working on this thing all at once and it's just it becomes so convoluted and muddled you know what i mean it's so hard to get one clean cohesive product out there when there's three thousand people working on it they're rushing it out so they can get right before you know the fourth quarter and the holiday sales and black friday and things like that like don't think the reason why it comes out in october now is because they wanted to get the game to us early so we can have fun with it no they want to beat black friday man they want to beat christmas you know, that's the reason why games are coming out in october now and as compared to like later november that's just that's what they do it's all marketing it's all money it's all bullshit dude and there's so many people working on the game and they just can't get the it comes out like a week earlier than it used to bro it ain't that big a deal like the fuck cod games used to come out like the first or second week of november now they come out the last week of october they moved it back one week bro that ain't that big a deal freaking work and i just man i really question this entire system that they have going on right now you know what i mean like the idea of like yeah i think all the calling cards challenges all that shit will be there for season one i don't know like if that's all that's missing, like challenges, calling cards, and like fucking leaderboards, like I can live with that. As long as I can actually play the game, I don't really care. And all the gameplay shit's there for me, so I'm not really that impressed. Like I, I don't really fucking care about checking my stats in between matches, so I don't know. It's not that big a deal for me. I'm just having fun playing the game. Classified XXX with the 10. Only issues I've had on PS5 is when I join a game, it freezes for five seconds, then resumes. Yeah, I have like that f menu freeze for a while every once in a while, too. It's mainly when I'm about to start a match. Like it'll say launching in five seconds, and then it'll look like it's about to crash, and then it's fine. Then resumes. Plus, I can't install content pack 2, so campaign's unplayable. But other than that, it's. Pr what do you mean content pack 2? I'm not sure what that is, but that's weird, man. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully they just fix everything, but I mean, the stuff that's there, I don't really think is huge issues, hopefully, but I don't know. At least the game is playable in multiplayer. I think that's the most important part, personally. Like, of all the things that could go wrong, I think not having leaderboards is probably at the bottom of the list in terms of severity. Like having 12 different studios all working on a call to the game to make it bigger and better than ever. Meanwhile, we don't have half the features that we had in 2007 with Call of Duty 4. How's that work? How does that make sense? It doesn't. But then again, that's the COD franchise, man. It doesn't. Like, I mean, Black Ops 2, for example, when that game launched, the servers literally were fucking unusable for almost a week. So it's like, I don't know, man. In the list of like, issues that could exist with a cod launch i will take no leaderboards over not being able to play the game any fucking day personally does it make any fucking sense <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that's all for this video i just i just uh, i just I, yeah but i'm done that's the video for today i hope you enjoyed it hopefully tomorrow's video will be a bit more positive i'm still working on my review of the game um again my review will be out when the game is finished and when the game actually launches <laughs> So stay tuned for that. But uh, as always, I try to keep up the daily videos here in the channel. So hopefully you guys all enjoy. Be sure to subscribe if you're new around here. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Anger. Hate. Paths to the dark side. And whatever the fuck. I don't know the quote. Uh, I saw it with the five. So that video didn't rock you. I got a good, um, wait, I got a good nope next time. Lol. I'm guessing you meant one, right? A good one next time and it auto-corrected. All right, bet, man.
why would someone leave stuttering in their video? I don't Who cares? Like, it's not that big a deal. I mean, if I didn't edit my audio and left, like, all my fucking mistakes in there, I could probably pump out, like, 10 videos a day, honestly. That's my biggest time sink, is I'm, like, fucking ADHD about always, or I guess not ADHD, it's OCD, about making sure there's, like, no fucking, like, audible gaps in me talking, there's no fucking errors, no, like, change in pitch, tone, whatever, I don't know. I'm really fucking, like, anal about editing audio, so... If I didn't care and I just, like, rambled on in a video for 10 minutes, I could probably crank out, like, 10 videos a day, no cap. Like, this shit would be easy. I can't afford this shit! And classified XXX with a 10. You know how in Modern Warfare 2019 and now this you have the game, then different content packs for multiplayer co-op. I'm guessing that's a console thing, but I think I know what you mean, like where you can like modify your install so you can install just the multiplayer if you want or just the campaign or just spec ops. I think I know what you mean. Content pack two is campaign. Gotcha. All right. That makes sense. So like it's basically like if you just want the multiplayer, you download content pack one or three or whatever the fuck it is and campaigns content pack two. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, that's kind of weird that it doesn't let you fucking do it. I don't know. They either cranked skill-based matchmaking up tonight or I'm simply getting put into harder lobbies. I think it's just we ain't as good as we used to be, man. The reaction time sucks when you get old. Is it worse lunch than the Gotham? Oh, no. Well, Gotham Knights is fucking unplayable in a lot of cases because of the frame drops. Gotham Knights' performance issues are fucking dog shit. Like, that game runs like trash. You you don't have to install Warzone this time around. Warzone is a separate install from Modern Warfare 2. Fun fact. So you do not have to have Warzone installed this time around, which is like a fucking hallelujah moment because I have never touched Warzone in my entire fucking life, so I don't even have to bother downloading it. So fat W's all around on that one. I don't know, man. But I'm going to go ahead and hop